Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. And I was getting ready to do a video for you all about groups and uh, chords, astral chords and telepathy. And then I heard a noise in the water down by where I'm sitting. And I noticed there's this big crawdad down there, a crayfish. Which, I don't know if you can see it or not, and the water's a little bit murky. See it moving along there? There it goes. It has big claws. And I think it knows I'm here because it's, fa it's got its claws facing towards the sound that I make in there. So, hello Mr. Crawdad. And, uh... I bet there's a few others down there too. But so, just to give you a glimpse of what I'm looking at right now, I'm getting a good view. And, uh, what you're hearing right now is a fisherman. He was out there fishing in there and Right around this way over here, sometimes you see a bald eagle circling, but it, it's leery of the people. I've been trying to get a shot of it for you, but it, it's very leery of people. So this is the opposite end uh, from where they were fishing. This is the outlet to the aqueduct over here. It goes off into the farm country behind me. And I uh, found a place to prop up my camera, which is a big help. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about groups as we're going through the ascension process. Um, you know, everybody's getting telepathic these days, and that's the truth. Um, and as I've written about a little, apparently there's quite a few different kinds of uh, telepathy. And uh, I'm only familiar with the first two kinds, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, there's a kind of telepathy that, that comes from the throat and the, and the head. And that telepathy, it has mental ideas in it. It has logic and reason and, and intuition. And it's a nice kind of telepathy because people are speaking from a, a kind of a, a civilized point of view to each other. Then there's another kind of telepathy. I, I just read uh, recently a uh, Scientific American article that was published in 2010, right? And it was about the, the intestines, the gut, and how they're aligned with neurons. And these neurons form, it's, a, it's part, brain cells, and they form a second brain, what you might call the gut brain. <laughs> and this explains a lot of the experiences I've been having in the last two years because I've been hearing telepathic communications that aren't logical, that have to do with the first few chakras, with survival, fear of death, um, fear for personal security, um, safety, that's the first chakra Then uh, in the old system, then problems with sexuality and lust and like in an animal sort of way that apparently we have these instincts but we are our, our thinking brain uh, keeps a keeps a grip on them but but telepathically like groups of animals we are transmitting these these and then there's a third chakra and that has to do with with forcing one's way in the world in the bad sense it, it has to do with rampant ego in the bad sense and just I am everything and if I'm not everything then I will soon be everything death to all but me that kind of thing of course as the chakras are cleared it's nothing like that but Right now in the world today, there's a, there's a lot of clearing to do in the lower chakras, if you know what I mean. So, um, so what I've been hearing, I've been hearing the gut brain of other people talking to me. And for a long time, I didn't know it was just the gut brain. I thought I was being threatened. Or, and, and I thought that, uh, that, uh, that, you know, that other people were... were like sexually attacking me and I thought maybe I'd die or maybe somebody would kill me because I wasn't them, you know, <laughs> a lot of stuff. And so I would have anxiety uh, sessions and all kinds of things would come up. And then finally one day I realized that it was just people's gut talking to me. All right. And from that led an understanding of something 
interesting that, that we might want to consider as we ascend. You know, things are changing a lot. So, um, what it is, is it might be because of courting. It, I don't really know the mechanism, but the groups that we uh, belong to could be a work group, it could be a spiritual group, it might be the people at the supermarket, <laughs> it could be a family group. Any group that, that we feel an affiliation for, they have their, their gut brain, those that we feel close to, are, is somehow talking to our gut brain, believe it or not. So we want to be careful about, um, about our allegiance to groups because what I'm finding is that groups have... Um, they have set ideas about how we, our, how, what our heart should be and do, but we have a, like a, um, a duty to our own heart to, 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 to feel it and know it and act on that, on that heart. But when we have these gut attachments to other people, all night long our gut, believe it or not, our gut is talking to their gut. And if their ideas are different from ours, it, we're constantly being inundated it, by those ideas to the point where it's hard for us in our daily, when we wake up, then we have to wonder where these ideas came from floating through the collective subconscious or the unconscious thought cloud of our dreams and into our brains. And in the morning we wake up and there they are. We don't know from where they came. So. So that it falls upon us to always feel our heart and to be very careful about who we associate with and to do our best to, to, to cut our cords and fill our aura with light. So I, I hope this was very clear to you. I think that we'll all be discovering it on an empirical basis as time goes on, or doesn't go on as the case may be, because there's, they say there's no time in the fifth dimension. But it seems like there is still time to us, even though for me the days flit by very quickly now. And um, I think we'll all start noticing the effect of groups on us. And um, so when you do, I hope you don't freak out like I did. <laughs> and uh, know that there's plenty of help available from, from higher beings so that we can relate to them or we can relate to our own pranic tube, a column of light, if we want to, instead of relating to groups. So, now, I don't know about you, but this information fell on my brain with a thud, and I was very attached to various groups. And uh, it took a while to sink in what was really going on. And so I hope it doesn't fall with a thud on your brain and that you just consider it as a possibility. Maybe it'll fit the facts of your own life, and maybe it won't. And so consciously grouping, <laughs> carefully grouping, or maybe not grouping and just being I am I, you know. So, blessings and love. A beautiful day. Love you.